ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, the second, the third was in section five, line 10 of the contract, which provides, um, in my interpretation, this is the actual language, uh, that the station produce or assist users in the pr production of original non-commercial video programming in the interest of MCC members in good standing and subscribers and whenever possible focusing on city issues, events and activities. And so we set out to correct these matters um, of contract non-compliance and I urge the board um, to review these matters very carefully. And I'm happy to say that on some of these matters they were addressed. For example, the budget was submitted to the mayor in May. Uh, it was a budget of approximately $162,000. Um, in terms of ADA compliance, there were some measures taken, some changes, physical changes were made at the station. A uh, person was hired to come in and evaluate the station's compliance, although um, the report of this gentleman was shown to us, physically kind of shown to us, board members were not privy to the internal content. So I'm not clear whether at this point they are in compliance with uh, the American with Disabilities Act. I do know that it was addressed in some capacity. Um, as it relates to Section 5, there seem to be very great philosophical differences on the interpretation of that uh, section. It's my interpretation that that um, suggests that members who come to the station can, accept, can expect assistance by staff. It suggests to me that staff uh, has the obligation to, whenever possible, uh, cover city events and community events. And there was great discourse about this. Um, what I'm happy to say about that is that that was addressed. There was a, a staffing change which allowed um, 20 hours of a week of a part-time staff person to be more available to members. In addition, there was um, the resurrection of what had been um, interns, student interns who would then go out and cover community events as available. So in the area of contract compliance, I'm happy to say that there have been some uh, changes in a positive direction. In terms of uh, financial controls, um, we have made great strides. The station has made great strides. There has been um, a bookkeeper has been hired. We now have year-to-date financial statements that come to us. We have a separation of the duties of check approving, check signing, um, and... But the audit hasn't been completed. What uh, has held the board up in having submissions made sufficient to get the audit completed? Um, I'm going to give you my best understanding of that because I don't have uh, all of the concrete information, but my records were not completely turned over. There were records that the auditors had been requesting that were not turned over for various reasons. Either they were unable to be found or it was unclear what those records were. As late as the August board meeting, um, I won't say a shoebox of papers, but a wire basket of receipts was turned in uh, by the general manager to our new um, accountant who then turned them in to the auditor. So a large portion of materials did not make it to the auditor until late August. Um, and I'm aware of that. I was at that board meeting. There are other documents that uh, the auditors have asked for that have not been provided. Why they have been not been provided is unclear and it has not been uh, fully stated at the board meeting as why there hasn't been a full response to that. And a uh, question to you. Does, did the board vote on a job description for the executive director? There has not been a final version of the job description for the executive director. There was a process in... Oh, I'm sorry, that was, I did that. By, I th no, I didn't. Number... Where is eight? Oh, up here. Is it on now? No. It's, it says green, so it should be on, shouldn't it? It's number eight. Uh, yes, you can. Number eight is flashing green. Flashing green, so. So it should be on. 
That's what I just said. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, my understanding is that there was a, um, what the general man, and I believe uh, the title that she's known by is general manager. Um, the general manager functioned off of um, what was a, a description of the position in the newspaper um, that stated general duties, and that's what she worked off of. Um, sometime in June, the board began to look at not only compens her compensation package, but the job description as well. A number of board members participated in an evaluation process and participated in the process of developing a job description. That was never finalized, uh, to my best knowledge, and the only board meeting I missed was uh, the 18th of September, which was the so annual there is meeting. no job description. There is no voted job description for the general manager, other than those set paragraph that was written for her when as part of the compensation package did we pay her to come to work and to yes basically uh, some stipend of some sort yes her compensation package was her salary uh, a, a gas reimbursement amount of an additional five thousand uh, dollars along with benefits including uh, family insurance for herself and her husband Continue. Okay, um, I believe I was on the issue of uh, financial controls. And so uh, there have been great strides in the area of financial controls. I believe the new accountant um, has made a world of difference. There is now an income statement and an expense statement that comes in every month. We're able to compare and evaluate how we're doing against the actual budget. I believe that's a wonderful improvement along with the uh, record keeping system and the separation of check writing, uh, approving, and signing. Uh, on the matter of boardmanship, um, and this was the most difficult area to talk about because I believe that, in fact, um, I stated uh, very clearly to, to the board president, along with the board uh, in an open session, and to the secretary in a private session that it's my firm belief that the current offices of MCC3 um, need to, for the benefit and future of the station, resign. And I don't come to that lightly because I came to this with an open mind intending to work with the members of the board and I believe they will testify were they here that I have done that in good faith. Um, however, are there enough members qualified to sit as board members that if anyone resigned, we would be able to elect anyone? Well, here, herein lies the problem. During my tenure, I, I understood there were 11 board members. I never saw 11 board members at a meeting. I never saw 10 board members at a meeting. I never saw eight board members at a meeting. Were you at the same meeting Mr. Vincent was attending? Um, I was at most of the meetings. He, start, he began several months before I did. But I can tell you for March, April, May, June, July, uh, August, and October, I never saw more than six members of the board. In fact, there were times when it was difficult to get a quorum. Um, so that, in fact, is one of the reasons that I believe that these board, this board can no longer lead this organization into the future. They do not have the capacity on the board to carry on the business of the company. They cannot carry on the management and policy making of the company because never, there's never enough of them. When there is a, I can go through a list of tasks that were begun and not completed. Um, and I, I think that, in fact, at some point, as a board member, you have to review and understand that, you know, it's time to move on. And I think in this case, this is what we have. But is there a membership sufficient to elect new board members at this point? The, members of the, me the membership number is uh, quite an interesting number because during my uh, time there, I tried to understand the membership number. I've had several different reports. Um, from 27 members to 17 members to 14 members. So it isn't clear to me actually how many members there are there. I'm going to guess that it's under 20. Um, there are an, 
three, I believe three or four members who are members for life. Um, there are several members who are members because they had won contests. Uh, and, and the prize of the contest was a year membership on TV3. There were probably under 20 paid members um, on TV3. No, there are not enough members to elect. Do you know uh, who the life members are? Um, I know two of them. I don't recall the other two names. One is Mr. Frank Pileri. Uh, the other is Mr. Art DeLuca. And how many members are... Excuse me, Mrs. Scary. I am Mrs. not. Mrs. Scary, please be seated. I am You're not out of confused. Order. She's out I'm of order. I'm extremely clear. He's out of order. On that fact. <laughs> please, I will ask you to refrain. Um, to, to get back to the tasks at hand that were tackled and that were not complete, um, I believe one board member spoke to the issue of minutes. And minutes has been a concern of mine since I walked in the door. Um, we have three sets of minutes that were voted upon that I'm aware of, and that is March, April, and May. I have not seen any minutes for... For which year, March, April, and May? 2008. March um, of what year? 2008. So it's March, April, and May of 2008, 2008. there are minutes. Um, for July and August, um, there are, although I believe minutes have been taken, I, I've seen someone take minutes. They have not been presented back to the board. So um, that is a concern. Um, if you take minutes and you document votes, then you need to represent them back in a timely manner. Um, I spoke to the issue of the job description, a task that was incomplete. Um, I, there, is, there were procedures and policies that were begun to be changed. Some were voted on. Um, it's unclear if that task was uh, complete. A number of board members had various policy uh, concerns that were raised. We have not seen a final document. Um, in terms of um, general overall administrative management of the board, I believe it's severely lacking. Um, Can I ask you about the bylaws? Have there been a new set of bylaws voted in? No. No? No. Is there a, was there a new set of policies and procedures voted in recently? There have been new policies and procedures voted in um, on a piecemeal basis. Has the whole document been overhauled? No. But there have been selected policies and pieces of language that have been changed, but nothing has been was finalized. Was that changed recently, since January of Since I've been on the board, it was a working, uh, it was something that we worked on as a board. Do you know if there is a, have you been given a published set of new policies and procedures? No, because they were not complete. Um, my fourth area of concern was in the area of uh, membership and community recruitment. And um, this has been um, very distressful. Uh, I find that, in fact, you know, one of the reasons that the station um, is having difficulty is its lack of membership and its lack of community credibility. And throughout my period uh, of being on the board, there have not been very serious efforts to outreach to the community either to outreach to the community by way of bringing on new board members or to bring on new TV3 members in general. Um, when I inquired about this, I was told that uh, there were 19 films that were made and that these films were recruitment efforts and that these films brought in um, large numbers of members. But I don't see those numbers on the books today. So um, it's unclear to me how a movie uh, brings on members, and maybe they did, and I don't, you know, dispute that they did, but I have never seen the differential in the numbers, what the membership was prior to the movies being made and what, the what it is since the movies have been completed. Uh, so it's hard to discern how effective that was as a recruitment piece. 
Um, and it's only recently that we see, as a result of um, the new interns on board, that we see community and public events being televised. Um, and it's my firm belief that unless the station gets into the community, the community is not going to get into the station. I believe it's a you know, self-fulfilling prophecy. One of the things I, keep hearing, I kept hearing as a uh, board member is, well, nobody's interested in TV3. Well, nobody's interested in TV3 because it's difficult to become a part of TV3. Um, I found in my brief time on the board that people are interested in TV3. Uh, and that there is a way that you can, uh, can recruit people. Um, I do believe that the efforts that were undertaken uh, were not targeted, were not sufficient or sustained. Um, so it's... Uh, now, during your time there, did the general manager bring to the attention of the board materials uh, concerning training and membership, recomposing the board, um, job description material that she had generated for them? She did. Um, to her credit, Ms. Natalia uh, brought to the board sample job descriptions, uh, salary survey, along with a uh, procedure manual that she brought back from a national conference um, which spoke about boardsmanship, stewardship, and a variety of, of ways in which to approach improving nonprofit boards. Um, that was distributed to each of us. We ought, each, she um, collected all that material, gave it to each one of us. Um, it was not acted upon. The only material change that I think happened in terms of board uh, development was that I had made a suggestion among many uh, that we develop a board recruitment packet and uh, attempts were made to put that packet together. I actually had requested that a DVD be made so that a potential new board member could pop it in and actually see what the station was all about. Attempts were made at that. Um, when it came to the August board meeting and I asked about that, I inquired, I said I had five potential nominees, can I have the final packets? They were incomplete and not done. Nominees would not have helped you at this point. Your bylaws require that they be a member for a year prior to the uh, election date. Th that's true for elected members, the four elected members, but the, four, okay. the appointed members may be appointed by, may be nominated okay. and appointed by board okay. members. So there was an opportunity at that time, July, August, and early September, to recruit new members. And I had indicated to the board that I had spoken to five people and that I thought two okay. potential uh, people could come along, but we needed to have some materials, some ways in which to engage the folks. That never materialized. So your time is now up. If you have additional comments, would you please uh, submit them in writing? Okay, thank you. Good morning. No, good evening. Good evening, Your uh, Honor. Good morning. My name is uh, Representative Paul Donato. I represent uh, the 35th Middlesex District and City of Medford. I'm also the uh, chair of the uh, Democratic Ward and City Committee. And uh, I have a letter here that uh, was. Uh, that I'm going to read uh, with your permission. Did uh, Judge Jackson Thompson, in September of the year 2002, the Medford Democratic City and Ward Committee sponsored two candidates forums pertaining to the nonpartisan elections for city council and school committee within the city of Medford. These annual forums are developed as educational programs to encourage greater civic engagement in the city of Medford by the general public. These forums are produced annually by volunteers from the Warden City Committee and panelists assigned each year to ask questions to candidates on pertinent issues. Panelists over the years have included the editors of the local newspapers, the Boston Globe columnists, members of the Warden City Committee, and other private citizens who are active in the community. This year, the Candidates' Night Forum was led by Mr. Ed Weber, a member of the Carpenters' Union, and Ms. Carolyn Rosen. Okay, you have to slow down. She can't... I'm sorry. Did you get any of it? <laughs> Are you going to submit the letter? Yes. Okay, he's going to submit the letter so you can rest easy. You'll have a chance to make it up. Okay. I apologize. <laughs> thought I was at the State House. <laughs> <laughs> this year, the Candidates' Night Committee was led by Mr. Web Ed Weber, a member of the Carpenters' Union, and Ms. Carolyn Rosen, a Chief Financial Officer of a local charitable organization and a producer at TV3. 
Both also served as co-moderators of the forum. As the chair of the Democratic Warden City Committee and a producer myself at Medford uh, Community Cable Vision, I personally delivered a DVD for this year's forum, meaning the year 2007, to be played within their programming time frame. As a producer, I was provided the times that the forum would play on TV and was told at the time of any complications that I should be made, a, made aware of. Upon tuning to MCC TV 3 to watch the forum at a time provided to me, I was surprised to find that the program had been canceled due, uh, had been canceled with a statement playing on TV that the forum had been removed from the air due to objectionable material. In confronting TV3 management and its board at their board meeting about this censorship, I was told that a board member, Mr. Arthur DeLuca, had removed the show. Mr. DeLuca claimed that he sponsored the show and had a right as a sponsor to remove this programming at his desire because a panelist had asked a question about TV3, and Mr. DeLuca, as a board member, found that offensive. Because I'm also a producer at TV3, the policies and procedures do not require me to have a sponsor to put the forum on since I would play the role myself. The particular panelist who asked the issue-oriented question was Dr. William Wood, a member of the Rodden City Committee and chair of its issues committee, who was filling in at the last minute for a guest panelist who had called in sick. Dr. Wood is also a TV producer as well. The city council who received the question was current city council president, Steffi Machini Burke. The Medford Democratic City Ward Committee protested the incident, which we believe violated not only the Democratic Party's right to political free speech, but also violated the political free speech of each candidate who participated in the forum. We believe the political free speech to be the most precious of all free speech in the country, and that MCC TV3's action is very serious offense. Therefore, on April 16, 2008, in its executive committee meeting, the officers and uh, members of the Warden City Committee and the chairs of each of the wards voted upon the following motion, be it hereby conveyed that the Medford Democratic City and Ward Committee is dismayed that their candidates' night program was eliminated during the course of an election and that we are concerned that the freedom of speech of the candidates and the Warden City Committee were violated. We find censorship conducted by MCC TV3 to be unacceptable. This motion was voted on and approved by the members of the Warden City Committee, myself as the chair, Nancy White as the co-chair, and the vice chair, Representative Carl Shortino, and the recording secretary, Dr. William Wood, and chairpersons, Ward 1, Errol O'Leary, Ward 2, Phil Pratt, Ward 5, Michael DiBenedetto, Ward 6, Dr. Christopher Quay, Ward 7, Ed Weber, and Ward 8, uh, Mr. Max Weinstein. You may uh, submit your material, so you'll be able to copy it. Just a uh, side comment, if I may, uh, uh, Your Honor, and that is uh, when I approached um, Mr. DeLuca and the board, uh, it, was, it was with a little bit of frustration that uh, a member of the board who acted in the position of uh, sponsorship, the, the, the programming had been on for some probably two weeks. Uh, some people think ad nauseum, but it was on for uh, a number of nights. Uh, but it was uh, kind of, uh, I was dismayed that a member of the board who was purporting to be a sponsor of the, uh, of the program would, would take the opportunity to eliminate a, a, uh, an opportunity for the public, the only opportunity, by the way, Your Honor, that the public has to hear their candidates, and these were the candidates both for the city council and the school committee in the city of Medford. So it, uh, it, uh, in, in my humble opinion, it was an egregious offense uh, to do something like that where this was the only opportunity the citizens of the, the city of Medford had to, to listen to the questions and hear what the, uh, the candidates had to say. Had that forum been a regular program on the channel in past years? Yes, it had. And, and how many years had... I want to, my, my recollection is about uh, for the past six years, seven years, both uh, in the city elections and in the state elections as well. 
and and I think that the the, uh, the concern of that board member was uh, a, a question was asked uh, relative to Channel Three, and uh, he found that, and he put that on the on the drum. He put that on the drum that he found that offensive, and it was offensive material. And I was trying to figure out that Sunday morning what could be offensive uh, in a uh, in a democratic forum. So I thank you for the time. I'm not running. Are there any other members of the board here that wish to speak? Any other members of the board of Channel 3 that wish to speak? Again, I'm the authorized representative of the board also. Okay, do they have a written co comment that the board members are offering? Do they have something in writing that you are submitting on their behalf? I do not want to take up time since they didn't come to uh, hear you read and read on, but we will certainly accept uh, their written statements. We certainly do. I okay, come up to the microphone and tell us what you, whose written statements you are presenting. Okay, one second. Uh, are you, he's trying to get me the statements of Okay. You have to go to the microphone so others might hear you. With, with respect to Council Donato's uh, uh, statement, uh, my understanding he was not a member of Channel 3 at the time of this uh, political program was being run. And the rules are quite clear that if you're not a member of Channel 3, you cannot run any programs unless you get a member to sponsor that program. Mr. Art DeLuca sponsored the program. As a sponsor, he undertakes liability for any misrepresentations, fraud, slander libel in a program, and for any, quite frankly, any misleading statements that were made in that program. As the, as the state representative, uh, has just said to you, it played for weeks. It did play for weeks under the responsibility of Mr. DeLuca, a member. Mr. DeLuca discovered, however, that he felt that much of Mr. Donato's program was not straightforward. It was inappropriate. And it was Mr. DeLuca's right an obligation as a sponsor of that program in his name to take it off for that reason. Mr. DeLuca is not a political person. I think we can all agree to that if you know him. So Mr. DeLuca had an absolute right to take his program off. Mr. Donato could have got another member to sponsor it, but Mr. DeLuca felt that he would be in violation of laws if he were to continue with his name on that program. Madam Chairperson, I stand here. Uh, okay, wait. I, you don't have to respond to it. There's a written document you have that says Mr. Tali said that Mr. Donato was a representative. Mr. Scary is doing what he normally does, play lawyer. Okay, I don't need that right now. I realize that there is no membership records that are available in that at this point in time. I am an attorney. May I say that he is an attorney. And membership records are an issue. Um, I have no one here to give membership records. I have requested membership records and minutes um, prior to this hearing. And neither the membership records nor any minutes have ever been presented. I have gone to the station several times. I was going to make this statement at the very end, but I'll make it now in the middle. Um, no records have been, no minutes have been presented to me, so I have no way of verifying votes. I have no way of verifying whether there was quorums. I have no way of verifying whether there's a two-thirds majority.